CC burn film is found under the stylized category. If I open that up and drag it out onto my first layer, it actually has controls that are very similar to just a simple transition. The burn property right here is what's going to control the entire effect. And like I said, it's basically just a transition. But I think that the reason why it's not in the transition category is because the pixels are actually being manipulated rather than just being wiped away. So we get these really nice organic holes blobbing into each other and making it look like this actually is being burned away. But we also get these dark burn marks that gradually get darker and darker as you increase that burn amount. It's also roughly coming from the center of the frame and that's what the next property is for. If I click and drag this point around, you can basically choose where you want the origin of that burn to happen from. So starting in the top left corner, that dark spot is going to originate from that point. And you can put that wherever you want. Let me reset that back down to the center. And the only other control we have is the random seed, which just gives a unique starting point for the transition and just randomizes the entire thing. This is a pretty straightforward effect, but it has a lot of strong possibilities for what you could do with it. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to take that first photo and I'm going to add a fill effect right before the CC burn film. And I'm gonna make this 50% gray. I'll click okay, and then I'll add a solid composite effect which is just going to fill in those empty holes. And I'm also going to make that 50% gray. So now my burn film effect is just gonna generate some darker spots. And then the holes opening up are gonna be the same color, that 50% gray as they were at the start. So I'm just gonna add some keyframes here, 0% at the start of the timeline, and then go forward maybe two seconds and increase that up to 100. So if I play that back, I now have this nice burn animation. All right, so I'm actually gonna shut that layer off. I don't need to see it. And on the second photo, I'm going to add the CC glass effect. And this effect uses a bump map where the brightness values of that layer are mapped to the distortion of the effect. So I'm gonna set the bump map to be photo one, which remember isn't actually the photo anymore. It's just this burn texture. And I need to make sure to change this to effects and masks so it's also looking at the effects. Let's play this back and see what happens. Okay, so there you go. It's a little hard to see, but it almost looks like rippling water going throughout the image. Why don't we make the height a little bit taller and the displacement a little bit more extreme? So there you go, kind of liquidy, metal, weird distortion going through. Now, this isn't necessarily the greatest example of how to use this effect, but I wanted to show you that so that you start thinking about how you might use this effect in other ways than just as a transition. There are lots of effects like this that use other layers as a brightness map or a luminance map, basically, to drive the distortion or effect that they produce. So try to think outside the box a little, but that's all you need to know about CC Burn Film. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.